Welcome to Spit Bucket. We are sitting here on the steps of the Sydney Opera House and we're about to go in and see the 2010 New South Wales Wine Awards. Very excited. We're going to try the wines, we're going to interview the winners and we're going to see what wines are putting New South Wales back on the map in terms of wine. Enjoy the show. What a great view. It's a pretty fantastic night and a sensational restaurant to be in. And tonight, we are celebrating. We're celebrating some of our greatest achievements right here tonight. In mid-2007, a group of us got together to discuss the marketing of New South Wales wine, which resulted in the launch of the New South Wales wine strategy in February 2008. But none of us could have dreamt then, none of us could have dreamt what I am proudly able to announce tonight. The most recent Nielsen data released tonight shows that New South Wales wine sales have grown by 22% in the last year in this state, or 14.3 million to reach a record 79.3 million. Furthermore, the New South Wales wine growth is increasing each year. This time last year, our sales were growing by 12.8%. Now they're growing by 22%, showing the New South Wales wine strategy has serious momentum in the consumer's mind, with every day they're coming back with their wallets and buying more. And very significantly, 60% of those sales were in the $12 to $20 category, a very financially viable category for our state, and it's growing by 23%. But even more impressively, is that 18% was over $20 and growing at 56%. Indeed, our cool climate regions, Orange, Tumbarumba, Hilltops and Canberra, are the new cool thing. Everything is hot, not cool about them, and everyone is talking about them. They're you know, definitely home to some of the most exciting wine regions, not just in New South Wales, but in Australia. They really are the home of the new start. Meantime, we're seeing an absolute renaissance in our established regions, be it Hunter Valley, Riverina, Cowra and Mudgee, with a lot of new dynamic makers in those regions. And the top 40 and trophy winners clearly demonstrate that. It's basically a head-to-head -head battle between the new and emerging regions, cool climate, and the established regions, in this case, Hunter Valley and Riverina this year. Now it's time to recognise the trophy winners. These winners are contenders for the 2010 New South Wales Wine of the Year. The 2010 trophy winners represent a head-to-head -head battle between the new emerging cool climate wine regions, such as Orange, Tumbarumba and Canberra, and the more established ones, the Hunter and the Riverina. The 2010 uh, Clear Image New South Wales Wine of the Year is Tempest 2, 2003 Copper Zenith Simeon from the Hunter Valley. I'm here with the illustrious Mr. Comans, who has just taken out uh, the award for the best wine in New South Wales. Uh, can you talk us through the wine? The wine's the 2003 Tempest 2 Copper Zenith Semillon. Uh, obviously, vintage 2003, beautiful uh, dry vintage. Uh, the grapes come off a dry grown vineyard in the Hunter Valley, and uh, it was our very first Semillon we produced at Tempest 2. And, uh, it's uh, been our highest awarded wine. The 2003 vintage was, as I said, uh, a great vintage and trophy. That's, the, uh, that's the trophy to uh, show what we've uh, received this, uh, tonight. What, what, um, what's going to be going in here? Do, do, do you have a... a... Well, last, last trophy I won, uh, we got a bit of a concoction of uh, champagne and beer and spirits. So, <laughs> so a bit of king of beers scenario. Let's let's go say, on here. Uh, we keep it to one single wine tonight. Next up we have the NAB Agribusiness Trophy for Best Young Riesling for Colburn Estate 2010 Riesling from the Hunter Valley. We're here with Richard, uh, the vigneron of Picolburn Estate and he's going to tell us a little bit about his wine, his award winning 2010 Riesling, the only Riesling grown in the Hunter Valley. Top quality Rieslings in Australia are normally associated with cool climate regions. Mm -hmm. Clare and Valley. The, and the, yeah, and uh, Canberra and Orange and New South Wales wines we're talking mm -hmm. about now. And Hunter Valley is definitely not a cool climate region. 
We've got a 40 year old vineyard and it's at the base of a mountain range and every morning in summer the cool air comes down from the mountains and it blows through the vineyard. A bit of microclimate action going yeah, on. Absolutely, and it's also on a, on a creek line so things down low. So we're getting a beautiful cooling effect uh, during the summer every morning. New South Wales Department of Industry and Investment Trophy for the best young Semillon. Uh, First Creek Wines 2010 Winemakers Reserve Semillon Hunter Valley. We're here with Liz from First Creek and she has just taken out the trophy for best current vintage Semillon. Can you please initially talk us through the wine before we get started on the serious questions? Sure. So 2010 in the Hunter was a fantastic year. And what's really lovely is that 2010 for First Creek was the year that I guess we built a great team and now we have myself and two other fantastic winemakers who uh, it's not so much a, a hierarchical thing or it's not so much a family, you know, matriarchal, patriarch thing. It's more about what we can do as young people in the wine industry. The Semillon, 2010, is it acidity or what, what's, what's making it into a really nice Semillon? Uh, what's making it is fruit weight. Fruit so I weight. think so many people think about Semillons as a structured, you know, acid and water and, and all those things. But the main thing to remember is that you have to drink it and we have yep. to drink it now. So yes. uh, too many wines, they say, well, in 10 years it will be great. But uh, for our Semillon, it's about now. Fantastic. And finally, the Classic Oak Trophy for Best Sweet Wine, which is the McWilliams 2008 Morning Light Potterus Semillon from Riverina. All right. <laughs> I'm here with Scott McWilliam, and he accepted a fabulous prize on behalf of his father, Douglas McWilliam. Can you please tell us a little bit about it? Yes, my father was awarded the Graham Gregory Award, which is uh, for his amazing contributions to the New South Wales wine industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, very proud and honoured to be here to accept it on his behalf. Unfortunately, couldn't be here just to put his business calls. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we saw in the speech you asked who knew your father and every single hand shot up. Um, t what is his influence in the New South Wales wine industry? I mean, everyone seems to know him. Yeah, you know, Dad has been uh, sitting on boards, participating on a voluntary basis within the industry and really giving back to the wine world. And this is one of the special things that I'm very proud about him for, is that, that uh, only now is he starting to get the acknowledgement, the recognition uh, that he deserves. So, yeah. uh, we've got, we make amazing wine. We, we, we have vineyards that uh, rival some of the best in the world. Hunter Valley Semillon is unique to Australia. Sure. Uh, you see the Botrytis wine that we had here, which we, uh, McWilliams received a trophy for. Um, you know, that's, that can rival some of the best sauternes, mm. for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So New South Wales has the ability to make some amazing, special and unique wine. Give us a favourite New South Wales wine of you and your father. That's something that you think is interesting, something you've tried recently. I mean, no holes barred. I'll tell you a little story about how when I was a kid and we were driving from Griffith to the Hunter Valley and we stopped in a place near Harden and my dad got out of the car jumped over a fence, five minutes later he came back with a jar full of soil. Yes. I wondered what he was doing, I thought he was mad. Um, it, what he was actually doing was soil testing. Mm -hmm. We eventually bought that bit of land and planted a vineyard called the Barwang Vineyard in the hilltops. And today it makes some of the best red wines in, in Australia. Fantastic. If you can get a bottle of the Barwang Vineyard, we can definitely recommend it. It's one of the staples of New South Wales wine, and in fact wine in the whole of Australia. I'm here with Tiffany, the chief strategist, the number one numero uno of the New South Wales wine industry. Now, we've all been told that Australia, uh, New South Wales wine industry is going from strength to strength. Can you That's give right. us a quick overview of it? Yes, that's right. Well, essentially, we launched a strategy in February 2008 to basically grow the representation of New South Wales wine in this state. And the growth has been phenomenal. We've grown 25 million in less than three years. And in the last year alone, we've grown by 22% to reach 79 million, growing by $14.3 million. So that's a hell of a lot of wine. It is. It is. <laughs> and is that uh, domestic or export? Where, that's the all just. From? That's all within New South Wales. So okay. just within our state, we've grown it by that. Um, what, are, what are the other regions that have really been firing in New South Wales? Well, obviously we're here for the New South Wales Wine Awards and there's quite a few regions that have excelled. Hunter Valley obviously is known. 
Riverina, also a very established region, Tumbarumba, Orange, Hilltops, Canberra, and Southern Highlands has also made the top 40 with two wines. So all of those regions are doing well. We are here with Mr Shaw, a very good name. Um, and he is the proprietor of Shaw Winery in Murrum Bateman Bay. That's correct. Um, and he is the only wine producer here at the New South Wales Wine Awards. He's got two of his wines in the top 40. We had two Rieslings in. We had a uh, winemaker selection 2009 and a premium 2009. They both got um, gold medals. Um, we missed out on the trophy. We'll probably get it next year. But sure no, the, the, the great wines and Canberra District is renowned now for high acid, beautiful, citrusy, limey, lemony um, reasons. Okay, well, wasn't that great? We got to speak to uh, Scott from Tempest 2 and his uh, fantastic 2003 Semillon. All the other winemakers did great wines and we're sure we're going to see a lot more of them in the future. On the spit bucket now we add, we're going to get them in and we're going to pick their brains a little bit more. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I'll speak to you soon. Don't forget, we spit so you don't have to.